In today's video, I want to show you how we can add payments to our website in record time, in less than 10 lines of code using Port1. One. Port1 one is a payment solution that provides a variety of SaaS products that efficiently reduce costs and save time when implementing online payment systems. That is because when using Port1, you can add tons of different payment providers to your website without having to integrate each one of them separately and without having to write any extra code. And don't worry, their service is completely free. So follow along. Let me show you how the whole payment flow looks like with Port1, including securing and verifying payments to prevent attacks. After creating an account and logging into the admin panel, first we will go to integrations to enable the payment providers we want to use. On this page, we can enable payment providers for testing or for production, and as you can see, there are many of them. For this test, we're going to enable those payments, KakaoPay and Payco. The last thing we have to do in our admin panel is to go to the API key section and copy our merchant identification code and the API key and API secret that we will use later. Now let's write some code. On the HTML, after the pay now button, we're going to first add the port1 SDK followed by our JavaScript code. When the port1 SDK is installed, it will create a global variable called IMP, which is how we're going to interact with port1. We are going to initialize it by using the merchant ID that we copied from our API key page before. Then we're going to grab the button and add an event listener to it. So the function on click pay runs when the user clicks on the button. Inside on click pay is where we are going to call the super awesome and powerful request pay function that is inside of the IMP variable. This function accepts a configuration object with all the options for a payment request. You can pass lots of options to this object. So I recommend you check the port one documentation website where you can see them all what they do and when to use them. For now, we're going to pass the most important and required options to make a payment request. First is the PG, the payment getaway. Here we are going to pass the code of the payment getaway that is enabled in our admin panel and that we want to use. All the possible codes are easy to find on the port one documentation. In our case, we write KakaoPay. Then for pay method, we are going to use card, which again, I found on the documentation, where there are also many options to choose from depending on the getaway we use. After that, we have amount, which is the total amount of money we will request and the product name, what the user will pay for. Finally, we pass the merchant UID, which is the ID of the order in our backend. This is useful to connect payments on port one with orders in our backend, our admin panel. That is it. So now all we have to do is click the button and see KakaoPay show up with the QR code to pay from our phone. We can now change the PG setting from KakaoPay to those payments. And as you can see, it will work just as well. Also, if you have a PG already in place, you can implement mobile payments from there as well, and it will work just fine. Crazy easy. With the code as it is, the user will be able to pay us, but we have to add some extra things to the configuration object to make it more complete. And we also need to pass a function that will run some extra code after the payment is completed. Here we are passing information about the buyer, like the email, name, telephone, and more if we have it. Now it's time for the callbacks. As a second argument of the request pay function, we will pass a function that will take a response parameter. This function will be called when the user pays successfully, when the user is not able to pay, or when the user simply closes the payment window. Inside of the response object, we will get information about what the user did so we can react accordingly. On the port one documentation website, you can find all the properties and what they mean. For this example, we will get the error message property to show to the user an alert if something went wrong. If the status is paid, we will get Get the IMP UID property. The IMP UID is a unique ID for this payment created by port one that we're going to send to a function called verify payment. But you might be wondering, why do we need to verify the payment? We need to verify the payment because you should never trust your users. You have to keep in mind that all the code that requests the payment and it specifies how much to charge the user is running client side in the browser of the user. That means that an advanced user could intercept the request that get the prices of your product and make your website generate a payment with an amount of zero, a free order. Because of this, we need to verify the order in our backend. Now that we know the user paid, we need to make sure the payment amount is the correct one. The implementation of the verify payment function does not matter. All it has to do is make a request to your backend to check the payment. On the backend, on whatever language you want to use, we need to call the port one API. First, we have to get a token. And then with that token, we can ask the API about about the payment that just happened. With that information, we can go to our database and search for the products the user bought and compare what they 
paid with the price they should have paid. In this example, using Node.js, in our backend, we first get an access token by calling the port1 API with our API key and secret that we got from the admin panel. Then, with that access token, we will get information about the payment that just happened from the port1 API using the IMP UID property we sent from our frontend. We can now get information about the payment and we can check that against our database. We are getting the amount, which is how much the user finally paid. And we are also getting the name and the merchant UID. To find the product the user bought, if they only bought one, we could use the name. Or if the user has a shopping cart, we can use the merchant UID, which should be the ID of the order in our backend that has all the products the user paid for. In our case, as you remember, the user was just buying one Meon Ramion for Yukman 1. So in our backend, we can just find that product in our database and check its price with how much the user paid. All we have to do is check if the price of the product in our database is the same as the amount the user paid. If it is the same, we will ship the package and send a 200 OK HTTP response. Else, we will report a forged payment and send a 400 bad request HTTP response. Your implementation on the backend might be different. You might have a shopping cart model. You might have coupons you have to apply to the price, sales, etc. The point is, on the backend is where you can verify that the user paid what they were supposed to pay. So to recap, the user pays on the browser. From the browser, we trigger a function that will check the payment on the backend. In our backend, we get an access token from port one and then request information about the payment that just happened. With that information, we check if what the user paid is correct or not. And we're done. There are a couple more things we should do to make sure our payment flow is perfect. One of those is to handle mobile payments. For this, back in our browser, when we request a payment, we have to add the M redirect URL property. We do this because on mobile browsers, the payment providers are going to redirect the users to their websites or app. And then after the payment is completed, they will redirect the user back to your website. After the mobile user is redirected back to our website to a URL like this one in case the payment was completed or like this one in case it failed, then it's up to us to grab the information from the URL's query parameters. If the payment was successful, we should trigger the function that calls our backend and checks if the amount paid is correct. And one last thing you can do to make the process even more solid is to set up web hooks. Web hooks are super useful in case the user pays and leaves your website immediately, not giving time for the verified payment function to run, or if their phone dies immediately after they pay, or if they enter an elevator and lose connection. Using a webhook, port one will notify you separately that a new payment has come in, and you can check in your backend if you have already processed it or not. To see how to enable webhooks, check out the documentation on the port one website. I am personally using port one for my service, and it saves us tons of time and allows us to support multiple payment providers with very little adjustments to the code. Recently, there are new products such as analytics and partnered settlement which utilize payment data. That is exciting. You can test all these payment solutions for free by simply signing up for port one. I've posted a sign up link below, so please go and check it out. That's it for this video. If you found it useful, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and thanks to port one for sponsoring this video. Onjana, kamsa hago, sana hamida. See you on the next one. Down by